It's Sunday morning, the second weekend of September, and that means the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo is today. It's been all weekend. We're going to take a little bit of a field trip today, go down to Toronto, and check out the biggest reptile expo that there is to go to in all of Canada. I'm Adam. This is Wiggins Wicked Reptiles. Let's go. I guess this is the part where I pretend like I didn't do the intro and this part at the same time during the same day. We went to the Reptile Expo today. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I got to meet some really cool people and it was really interesting because for the first time since starting a YouTube channel, I had people behind desks, behind like in the booths, who knew who I was. Follow your channel by the way. You really? Which was really cool and it allowed me to do interviews with them, which is the most important part to me. I don't care if people recognize me because they watch my channel. I just want the opportunity to meet new people and kind of check out some animals that maybe I would never get the chance to actually hold and touch and talk about otherwise. And what I mean is today we get to check out Chuck Royal's collection uh, at Serpent Exotics. What an amazing collection. He's got a world's first boa. He gave me the opportunity to talk to him about this world's first boa and kind of talk about what he does and just kind of a great opportunity to show the really amazing type of breeders that there are in Canada. So let's go ahead and talk to Chuck and then we'll come on back. All right, we're here at the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo with Chuck Royal, uh, the owner of Serpent Exotics. And this is a world's first boa constrictor. Tell me about this boa constrictor. Well, it's, a, it's, it's both sterling and BPI albino, which are two pretty rare morphs. And uh, it's the first time they've been put together and the look is pretty, pretty amazing. I'm just impressed with it. Uh, it's turning quite yellow with time and I think it's going to be an amazing animal. So I imagine that you're not going to sell her unless someone gives you the almost $20,000 price tag. But yeah. uh, what are the expectations or, or what do you plan on doing with this animal in the future? That's a good question. We, we're, we're kind of keeping it open, but uh, there's a lot of very hot genes right now in, in boas. Maybe IMG or um, uh, putting uh, blood would be interesting. We'll pull out the reds. There. She was born with red coloration in the tail, and now it's darkening. So maybe pulling that color back in uh, to the, the combo would be a great idea. But as is, she looks amazing. I can't wait to grow her out and just keep her and uh, just going to be an amazing big large boa. This is maybe the most impressive boa constrictor I've ever seen. Very cool. Uh, and besides boa constrictors, what else do you breed? You, you know you get uh, Burmese pythons, right? Yeah, we do uh, super more free ticks. We're trying to do the smaller uh, giants. So I'm, do, I'm doing half dwarfs this year, next year, and pure dwarfs and super dwarf free ticks. And we're getting the percentages very high. And some ball pythons and a couple of collybrids, uh, black milk snakes, uh, Mexican black king snakes. And, you kind of got the whole gamut, a little bit of everything. I, I, I do what I enjoy. Awesome. I, uh, yeah. That's cool. Well, hey, thank you very much. It was an honor to You're hold this beautiful animal. And uh, I can't wait to see next year what you've done with her. And it wasn't just Chuck. We got to see Mike Tatula was there. Chuck, what's your channel? Uh, Wiggins Wicked Reptile. Wiggins Wicked Reptile. Yeah, yeah. That's a mouthful, but it works. Yeah. Uh, Lordy Lion was there. Dave Kaufman was there. It really was like the who's who of people who talk about reptiles on YouTube, which to me is cool because I think a lot of people learn about reptiles or uh, kind of procure this fascination that you have ultimately about reptiles because of people that you watch. For me, when I was a kid, it was Steve Irwin and Jack Hanna and all these guys who are on television. And now we're in an age where most people don't have cable. So you're going to be watching something on Netflix or another streaming service or YouTube, the second biggest search engine in the world. So. For me to have this platform to be able to talk about reptiles is amazing and just looking at what these guys have done for the community and I got to talk to some of these guys like Lord of Lion. Uh, Hello guys. I'm so excited to be here. This is one of the guys who kind of inspired me to start a channel like this. What is it that inspired you to start a channel and how long ago Honestly, was that? I really love reptiles. So my whole thing was like to make reptiles uh, kind of a uh, household name where like people would like get educated as well as um, you know, everyone could be familiar with it. 
So for me, I just loved reptiles as well as making videos. I really loved it as well. So I kind of just meshed the two together. And yeah, now I'm here with two cameras <laughs> recording videos. So it's pretty cool, you know, you start. And that's why, you know, it's really cool that you started too because, you know, there's not many Canadians, uh, you know, going around recording these shows. So honestly, like, this guy's gonna be famous soon. Like, I'm gonna be recording him. Like, I'm letting you guys know. <laughs> no, it's really cool, man. And uh, I think that's kind of what inspired me too, because yeah. another Canadian doing it, and it's not as big of a hobby here as it is yeah. south of the border. So, just trying to get the name out there and, and trying to make it so that everyone kind of understands what reptiles are. They're not these weird, creepy things, and yeah. nothing to be afraid of. It's just, you know, a snake or a gecko or whatever. And yeah. I think it's really cool the way you do it too, where you don't have hordes of animals. You yeah. have everyone in their like display enclosures. Yeah. Oh, it's very cool and I think that uh, a lot of people could look up to someone like you in yeah. the way that you keep your animals. Yeah, and if you guys want to follow him, <laughs> I'm joking, <laughs> they're ready for him. And I think as we take a walk around and I show you what was at the expo, I think it's really important, uh, kind of like Lord of Lion and I talked about, to not hoard animals. It's going to these expos isn't about getting the most amount of animals or getting a new animal every time. Although I've been guilty of that, this was one of the only reptile expos that I've been to where I didn't bring home an animal. So nothing new, but the plants behind me, those are new for an enclosure that I'm building. Uh, it's going to be in a future video. I got a new enclosure that has, well, you'll see next week, a really cool idea. Um, kind of what I've been talking about with building up the wall of display enclosures in the reptile room. So that's new. Um, and we just kind of got supplies and I think that's the best thing right if you have reptile expos in your area but you don't want to go get a reptile and you just want to see them there's another way that you can really make the biggest bang for your buck I guess or get the biggest bang for your buck and that's getting your reptile supplies at the reptile expo feeders as well because uh, you're gonna have better pricing it's gonna be more competitive there and you're gonna have a little bit more expertise available to you it's a great place to talk to people. Um, I met a really cool guy, Matt from Beauty Boas. Him and I talked about the way that he breeds boas, which is just kind of amazing to me. Here, this is what I'm talking about. My biggest battle is this. Do I want to produce the most expensive snakes or do I want to produce the most beautiful ones? And to me, I'll sell this one and I'll keep that one mm -hmm. because this one's prettier. Well, you are beauty boas, exactly, not uh, yeah. exactly. Exactly. And then so I have lots of them that are just pets that I haven't bred because I haven't found one pretty enough to breed with it. So, like Matt was saying, he's taking the quality, not the quantity. Where you see a lot of these breeders uh, on YouTube, not to name any names, you know exactly who I'm talking about, who pump out or used to anyway back in the days, pat pump out as many animals as possible to make the biggest profit. And this guy was not about that at all. I was really impressed with the way that Matt executed and thought about breeding boa constrictors. Uh, and if I ever do get a boa constrictor, which I'm trying not to buy any more animals, don't buy any more animals, it will be from this guy. Because his passion seems so genuine. And you meet a lot of really cool people at these expos that you probably would never have a chance to meet otherwise, and they're from all around. So if you have the option, go to one. But the other thing too, I got a couple things of, uh, I always talk about Beyond Pete as the substrate I use for a coconut fiber, like right, like a coconut byproduct. So there was another um, vendor there that had this type of thing. So I got two big bricks of those for cheaper than I'd even get here. Definitely cheaper than Eco Earth. Uh, other things for substrate, um, some hydro balls, which is gonna all go into one enclosure with the plants behind me that you're gonna see in the next few weeks. And then I got to get one of these three compartment PVCs, which I'm gonna show you next week how to set that up. So I kind of got a lot of stuff for a very cheap price where if I were to get it at a pet shop, maybe I'd get that one PVC thing that I got, that one PVC enclosure for the same price as everything that I got today. And I got to hold some really cool animals and I got to see some really cool stuff. So I think the idea is get a game plan, figure out who's going to be there. If there's something that you've been really looking forward to getting, maybe this is the opportunity to get it. But if not, it's your chance to save yourself a bundle of money to take care of the animals that you're already taking care of anyway and you're supporting people who are really in the hobby and have a passion for this which is something that's really uncommon in a lot of areas that you go to that's kind of the point that i wanted to get out in this video right and i really think that talking about it with lord of lion who was one of the guys who i was watching before i started a channel and kind of inspired me to start my own channel 
I got to uh, I got to talk to him about kind of what it is to to be a good ambassador for this community and not hoarding animals and just kind of taking the best care possible. So I wanted to drive that home. Going to an expo doesn't mean you have to bring home a new friend. It's not bad to bring home a new friend, but don't feel like you have to bring one home just because you went to one. There's other opportunities and other reasons to go. And I just wanted to go over kind of a game plan for how to go to Reptile Expo is why you should go to one and just show you all the beautiful scenery that you could go to. And because this was a uh, pet expo and the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo in the same building, you got to see like the coolest uh, animals, like and not even just reptiles, but like there was dogs and cats and birds and small animals, hedgehogs. It was the coolest thing. I saw one guy had a cat walk around on his head. Coolest thing, birds on harnesses and stuff. Uh, and like you saw last week or beginning of the week rather, we have a bird now too. So now my girlfriend's super gung ho about getting uh, Zazu a leash so Zazu can walk around and bite my ear all day or whatever he's going to do. So that's it. In the comment section below, tell me what you do at uh, expos, how you take care of your to-do list at an expo or what the game plan is. And of course, because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday.